So for number 11, we're trying to provide counter examples for each of the following. And um, these are, for the first three, these are conditional statements of the form if P, then Q. So to provide a counter example, um, the antecedent has to be, to be true. So P is true, but Q is false. So that would make the whole statement false, right? So <clears throat> we're looking for sets A, B, C such that this is true, but this one is false. Um, so I'm going to say that A is going to be the set um, 1, 2, B is going to be the set um, 1, 3, and then C is going to be the set 1, 2, 3. Because then if we do this, then A union C, well, I'm just going to join the elements from A and C, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3. And B union C is also going to be, if we join them, that's just going to be 1, 2, 3. So it is true that the set 1, 2, 3 is, in fact, a subset of the set 1, 2, 3, because every element in the first one is in the second one. So the antecedent is true. However, um, A, which is the set 1, 2, is not a subset of B, which is the set 1, 3, because this 2 here is not in the in B, right? So this one here is false. So we were able to show um, with these examples where the antecedent is true, the consequent is false, and therefore um, the statement is false. So let's go to item B. And now I'm going to keep the same for A and B, but I'm just going to modify C. So I'm going to put it here as 1. So now what we're trying to show is if A intersection C is a subset of B intersection C, then A is a subset of B. So um, A intersection C, well, that's just going to be 1, right? It's whatever is in both of them, so that's just going to be 1. And similarly, B intersection C, that's just going to be 1. So A intersection C is in fact a subset of B intersection C because uh, the set containing 1 is a subset of the set containing 1. So that is true, right? So the antecedent is true, but then the consequent um, A is not a subset of B because the set 1, 2 is not a subset of the set containing 1, 3, since once more this 2 is in the first one, but it's not in the second one. So we've produced another counterexample where the antecedent is true, but the consequent is false. So um, that makes the whole statement false. Okay. Um, and for item C, I'm going to change the sets some more. So I'm going to say that A is going to be the set containing 1, 2, 3, and B is going to be the set containing 1, 3, and, oops, my notations are getting very ugly. Yes, and C is going to be the set containing 1, 2. Okay, so now um, we want the antecedent to be true, right, but the consequent to be false. So let's check whether this works. So A minus B is going to be all those that are in A but are not in B, so that's just 2, right? And A minus C is all those that are in A but are not uh, in C, so that's going to be just 3. So we can see here that A minus B intersection with A minus C, well, that's just 2 intersection with three, which is empty since they have nothing in common, right? So the antecedent is true, but now we have to check, is the consequent false? Well, um, B intersection C is not empty because we can see that B intersection C contains the element one. They have that in common. So we can see that um, using these sets, the antecedent is true, so that's true. However, this is false, since they do have um, one in common, right? Um, so for item D, now we're using power sets. So let's, uh, for D, we're going to say that A, we're going to call that 
1, 2, and B, we're going to call that 1, 3. So first, let's do the power set of A. So the power set of A um, is a set containing all the subsets. So it contains the empty set, which is a subset. It contains the set 1, it contains the set 2, and it contains the set 1, 2. So that's the power set of A. And the power set of B, well, it'll contain the empty set, it'll contain the set containing 1, containing 3, and then containing 1, 3. Right? Um, so we want to show that this is not true, right? So power set of A minus the power set of B, um, it contains all the elements that are in A but not in B. So it's not going to contain it's not going to contain this one because they have that in common. It's not going to contain this one because they have that in common. Um, and we're just left with two since it's not in the other one and one two. So that's going to be uh, it's going to contain the set two and it's going to contain the set one two right. Now is this a subset of the power set of a minus b? So now let's do. Um, I guess I should have done that beforehand. So I'm going to put this down here. Um, and let's find the power set of A minus B. So P of A minus B, um, and I should write that A minus B, that's just going to be 1, 2 minus uh, 1, 3. So that's just going to have the element 2, right? So the power set of this set is just going to have two elements. It's just the empty set and then the set containing 2, right? So um, is it the case that this guy right here, uh, power set of A minus power set of B, which is this, right? Is this a subset? Is this a subset of power set of A minus B, which is this guy? Is this true? So let me put this here. Uh, Um, is that true? And no, it isn't, right? Because you do have some elements. There is this element here in the first one that is not contained in the second one. So it is not a subset. So we have produced an example here where A is a set 1, 2 and B is a set 1, 3, where the power set of A minus the power set of B is not a subset of the power set of A minus B. Um, so that's it for item D. And now for item E, we want to show that these are not true, right? So what we're going to, let's come up with an example. I'm going to say here that A is a set uh, containing 1, 2, and B is the set containing 1, and C is the set containing 3. Okay, so um, we're going to have to build this up slowly, right? So maybe let's do some intermediary steps. So we have B minus C. Well, if I begin with B and I remove C from it, well, that's just B because I didn't remove anything, right? So that's just the set 1. And then A minus B, well, we begin with the elements 1, 2, but then we remove 1 from it, so that's just going to be 2. And then, let's see, A minus C, that's going to be 1, 2, minus 3, so that doesn't change anything, so that's just going to be 1, 2, right? So we have that A minus B minus C is uh, 1, 2, which is A minus B minus C is this, right? So that is just going to be the set containing 2. So this is going to be just 2, right? And now we are going to, we have to find A minus B minus A minus C. So A minus B is here. So that's just going to be the set 2 minus A minus C. So minus the set 1 comma 2. And that is just going to be, if we remove the elements that are in the second, well, 
nothing's left in a minus b, right? Because we the only element that it had was 2, but then we're removing from it 2 here. So we're left with the empty set. Um, so we can see here then that a minus b minus c is not equal to a minus b uh, minus a minus c in this situation since uh, the set containing 2 is not equal to the empty set. That's it for item E. And lastly, for item F, let's see. So for item F, we're going to say that set A is the set containing 1, 2. Set B is, just contains 1. And set C also just contains 1. So let's do these intermediary sets. So B minus C, if I begin with a set containing 1 and I remove the 1 from it, well, that's just going to be the empty set. And A minus B, um, so if I begin with A and I remove the element in B, I'm just going to be left with 2, right? So A minus B minus C, well, that's just going to be the set A, which contains 1, 2, minus b minus c, which is the empty set. So that's equal to the set 1, 2. And then a minus b minus c. Well, we begin with a minus b, which is this one. So we begin with 2. And then we remove from it c. So we remove from it 1. Well, that doesn't change anything, right? So if I begin with the set 2 and I remove from it the element 1, I can't remove from it anything. So that's just going to be 2. And we can clearly see here that these are not the same, right? So A minus B minus C is not equal to A minus B minus C because this is the set 1, 2, and that's not equal to the set just containing 2. Um, so that is it for problem 11.